Dave, I wanted to bring you in on this point on how AstraZeneca sort of works with the ovarian cancer community, with cancer communities in general, to, to increase awareness of that absolute necessity of early testing and early diagnosis. Yeah, and I think also a huge piece of this is the biomarker testing, Ermina's uh, story, and thank you, Ermina, for sharing uh, with us uh, as you did, is one where you hear how um, her treatment is being tailored based upon a biomarker. And I think that perhaps the simplest thing that I would convey on this is that we have really come to learn and know that what drives cancer in one particular woman may not be the same as what's causing the cancer in another. And by understanding the drivers of that cancer, we've been able to make a lot more progress in terms of how we think about treating the cancer. So that biomarker work is absolutely essential. You also heard Tracy talk about the role of multidisciplinary teams. So when we say that, there's a surgeon, there's a pathologist, there could be a radiation oncologist, a medical oncologist, a nurse, well, all of these people play an important role in making sure that the right screening and testing and biomarker work is done. So when you ask what AstraZeneca does, I say the two most significant things that we're doing is across the globe, we work together with diagnostic partners to make sure that we are able to actually create the availability of these tests. And then the second big piece is that we work with multidisciplinary teams to ensure that they have a high degree of understanding, awareness, and education around it. And then the third piece, which is key, of course, is, is reimbursement. And so it's essential to ensure that there's the ability for these tests to be paid for and uh, that there's a, a path and a mechanism for that. And that obviously is variable across the globe and depending upon the different rules within the globe, but it's an area that requires every bit as much focus from policymakers and from payers as therapeutics themselves. And I mean, if I can come back, come back to you now, I'm, I, mean, I know you're a nurse, so you will have a bit of a head start perhaps on, on um, the symptoms and uh, things to look out for than perhaps other people would, um, non-medically trained. But what, what was your awareness? What did you know about ovarian cancer? And, and did you know anything about the symptoms to look out for beforehand? I have to be honest, hindsight is a wonderful thing. <laughs> now looking back, I can see I had symptoms, but to be completely honest, I wasn't aware of ovarian cancer. I was aware of breast cancer as both my grandmothers succumbed to a disease. I was aware of cervical cancer. They are very um, shared in the media, lots of information about breast cancer, cervical cancers. You know, girls are vaccinated against HPV to prevent cervical cancer. Uh, nobody speaks about ovarian cancer at all. It's like when women go to have the um, cervical smear test done, nobody checks their ovaries. Why wouldn't we do ultrasound scan routinely on the same day as a, a cervical smear? That would help probably diagnose ovarian cancers early. Regarding the genetic testing, mm -hmm. because of my family history, I actually few years ago, and I think it was because of Angelina Jolie, I did went to a GP and asked for genetic testing. Oh. Unfortunately, I was refused. I was told that it wasn't the immediate family, therefore I'm not eligible for genetic testing. After the diagnosis, I found out that I am BRCA positive, and it was actually my dad carrying the faulty gene, passing it on to me. Therefore, what I would like to see is uh, women who have history of breast or ovarian cancers, despite if it's grandmothers or cousins, if they feel like they need to be tested, that the test should be available for them. I personally could avoid all my cancer journey if I wasn't denied that test a few years ago. I think that point is so important. And, and as Amina was telling her story, it reminded me of a patient advocate that we work with, who's actually a doctor, who has a strong family history. And she uh, went to her GP to get a referral for genetic testing. And there was a lot of 
kind of hesitation and clarification of guidelines. And, and she was actually diagnosed with ovarian cancer on the day that her genetic test was scheduled. So, you know, I think there's just such an important message about, uh, you know, women being aware of the significance of family history and cancer in their family and not just female cancers. I also think the other point that was really important uh, that was made is that, you know, you can inherit genetic mutations from your both parents, so it's not just female cancers. So I, I think I think that point increasingly is so important, and it is a huge, I think, a, a awareness raising um, gap that we, you know, that we all must work to fill. Increasingly important. Oh.